4.7, using L'Hopital's rule for determining limits of indeterminate forms. Alrighty, if I want to take the limit of this, well, we could try to do our limit methods in different ways, but we're going to try L'Hopital's rule here. Alright, and to do that, what we first do is you're just going to plug in zero. For all limits, we always do that, plug in zero. When you plug in zero, what you're going to get here is you're going to get 8 times 0 over sine of 3 times 0, which becomes 0 over sine 0. And if you think about the unit circle, sine 0 is 0. So you get something 0 over 0. This is called indeterminate form, because you, all right? So we're stuck. But the Hopital's rule says, hey, one thing you can do is you can take the derivative of the top and of the bottom and then take the limit again. And it can give you the limit. It's kind of interesting. So I'm going to now take the limit as x approaches 0. And what I'm going to do is take the derivative of the top. So 8x becomes 8. And the bottom will become 3. Oops, not 3 sine. I shouldn't say sine. The derivative of sine is cosine 3x. All right, because you take the derivative of sine 3x and then take the derivative of 3x, put it out front. That would be your new derivative, top and bottom. Take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom. This is not quotient rule. This is just top derivative, bottom derivative. Now we simply plug in the numbers. So now we plug in 0. The top would be 8, and the bottom would be 3 times cosine 3 times 0. So what do we get when we do that? That becomes 8 over 3 times cosine 0. And what is cosine 0? Cosine 0, isn't that 1? So won't that be 8 over 3? And there's your answer. That is the limit. We just found the limit as x approaches 0 of this function. It's 8 over 3. All righty. So let's do this one. Um, let's see if L'Hopital's work. But what we're going to do is we're going to plug in pi, top and bottom, and see what we get. So if we plug in pi, we will get log base 4 e to the 0, because pi minus pi is 0, over tangent pi. Actually, before I put tangent, I'm going to put sine pi over cosine pi, because I think, for me, that makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, if we think about this, e to the 0 is 1. So this is log base 4, 1. And this is going to be sine pi over cosine pi. If you think about the unit circle, sine pi over cosine pi is going to be 0 over 1. And if you think about log base 4, 1, isn't that saying 4 to the what power is 1? Isn't that going to be 0? So isn't this going to be 0 over 0, which is another indeterminate form? So it's indeterminate form. So this is indeterminate form. We can simply take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, then plug in pi, and see if that helps. So here we go. We're going to take the limit as x approaches pi, and we're going to take the derivative of the top. All right, derivative of the top, we have a natural log. Sorry, a log. So that would be, um, to do that, you take the derivative of the inside. That goes on top. So that's just going to be e to the x minus pi. And, the and then you leave the, 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 the inside. That's the bottom. So you take the derivative of the inside, put it on top. Leave the inside, put it on the bottom. And also put in ln 4. That's the derivative of the top. The bottom, the derivative of the bottom, is simply secant squared x. All right, so we just took the derivative. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. By the way, won't these cancel, leaving you one on top? So if we think about the cleaning this up, won't this be the limit as x approaches pi of 1 over ln 4 over hmm, 1 over cosine squared x? Now you might be like, what, what, wait, secant. Isn't secant squared 1 over cosine? Secant is 1 over cosine. So let's clean this up again. This will help, I think, see things if you, if you keep cleaning it up. What we end up here with is cosine squared x over ln 4. All that cleans up. All right, so I took the derivative of top and bottom, and I cleaned it up. Now can we plug in pi? Yeah, let's plug in pi. Let's see what happens. When we plug in pi, what we're going to get is cosine pi squared over um, ln 4. And what is cosine of pi? Cosine of pi is negative 1. And what's negative 1 squared? 1. So what my final answer just be 1 over ln 4? And then that would be the limit, 1 over ln 4. 
So we have this limit. Let's give it a shot. Let's plug in zero. We always want to plug in the number to start with. When we plug in the number, we have one minus cosine. This becomes a zero because five times zero is zero. And it's going to be three to the zero minus one. Let's see what we get when we clean this up. This is one minus cosine zero is one. And then um, three to the zero is one. So we get zero over zero, which is indeterminate form. Once we get indeterminate form, we can go, oh, we can use, in this situation, L'Hopital's rule. So let's take the limit of the top and the bottom. So the limit of the top, the, I'm sorry, the derivative of the top, sorry, is the one becomes just gone. Then we have negative cosine. So the negative, but we have, we have derivative of cosine, isn't that negative sine? And then what we have, the times five, and on the bottom, the derivative of 3 to the x is simply 3 to the x times an ln 3. And then the minus 1 just becomes 0, because the derivative of that is 0. OK, and let's clean that up a little bit. So I now have the limit as x approaches 0 of 5. And my 5 looks like an s, sorry, over 3x times ln 3. OK, and then don't we normally just plug in 0? Plug in our number now. Let's see if the limit works now. All right, so if the limit works, let's try this. Oops, didn't want that marking there. So that's going to be uh, 5 times sine ends up being 0 over 3 to the 0 times ln 3. What does that give me? That gives me 5 sine 0 is um, 0 over, isn't that 1 times ln 3? Let's think about that because 3 to 0 is 1. So I now have 5 times 0 over, isn't that going to become 0 over ln 3? And what's 0 over ln 3? That's 0. So my answer is 0. That would be my limit value answer. Now, by the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but if for some reason when you plug it in, you should get 0 over 0 again, you can apply L'Hopital's again. If you got 0, 0 again, you could go and take the derivative now, top and bottom, once again. You can keep doing it over and over and over again. As long as your new result is 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can keep applying L'Hopital's repeatedly. And that's sometimes what you need to do. Let f be the function defined by blank, and g be a differentiable function with the derivative given by blank. So f is a function, and g prime is a derivative of g. It is known that the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is infinity. And the value, so what is the value of this limit? All right. So if we think about this, we want the value of this limit. Well, let's apply, let's plug in um, infinity. What do we get when we plug in infinity to this? This is first, because that's what you're supposed to do. So let's plug in infinity. So the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x over f of x. Well, we plug in infinity. Well, didn't it say right here that the top is going to be infinity? Isn't that what it says right there? And for the bottom, if I plug in infinity, won't that be 1 over 2 to infinity? Because there's a negative power. Remember, negative power, you've got to be careful of that, times 5 times infinity. Um, hopefully, you can see that's negative power means you, you put it to the bottom. So let's think about this. <clears throat> what do I have here? I have infinity over, isn't this going to be 0? Do you guys remember that? A number over infinity is approaching 0. So, but 0 plus infinity. So isn't that basically going to end up with um, infinity over infinity? Ooh, I can't draw my infinities. Um, which is indeterminate. So since it's indeterminate, I get infinity over infinity. What I do now is I take the derivative of top and bottom. OK, so we're allowed to do that. So what we have now is we're going to do the L'Hopital's rule, okay, which is going to be g prime x over f prime x, which is going to be the limit of x approaching infinity of, well, we know g prime x is right here. So can I simply type that one in? Oh, my wrong spot. My error, my error, g prime's on top. I'm used to being, g's are always on bottom usually. So doesn't g prime go on top? So won't that go on top? 
and on the bra, bo, bla, on the bottom, isn't it the derivative of this? Won't that be on the bottom, the derivative of that? Well, the derivative of 2 to the negative x is going to be 2 to the negative x times negative 1, so that would be a negative, okay, times ln 2. And then the derivative of 5x, isn't that just going to be 5? Okay. So that would be the derivative of the bottom. Now can we plug in our fun little infinity sign? Let's do it again. Let's plug in infinity to our new derivative top, derivative bottom. It's kind of a weird written problem, but that's the kind of thing you want to be aware of. So what we have now is we have cosine of 7 over infinity minus 4 over infinity squared. Remember, the negative powers go to the bottom. This becomes negative um, 1 over 2 to infinity um, with an ln 2 on top plus 5. So let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. So isn't this going to be a 0 here? Isn't 7 over infinity 0? Isn't 4 over infinity squared also 0? Isn't this one going to be a number over infinity? So isn't this going to be 0? Just think about those. This right here is going to be a 0. So this is going to be cosine 0. This one right here is going to end up being a uh, cosine 0. Um, this is just going to be a minus 0. This is going to be a 0 and a plus 5. So, so you got on top you got cosine 0 minus 0. On the bottom you got 0 plus 5. What is cosine 0? Well, isn't cosine 0 1? So won't this become 1 minus 0 over 0 plus 5, which becomes 1 fifth? And that would be your answer to this particular problem.